Thanks. Well, we have not always dodged a bullet, as Jack Kelb knows. And uh, so far, we've been uh, been lucky. Was it saying it's better to be smart or lucky than smart? Lucky than smart. So far, pretty smart. But uh, and uh, so far, we've been lucky. Doesn't mean we'll always be. I uh, welcome you all today. Especially want to welcome Jack Kelb uh, from uh, from Delaware. And, and uh, Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you, your staff, others that worked uh, on uh, in this hearing. And we look forward to hearing from each of um, of, of you. As um, some of you in the, in the room know, uh, the issue of avian influenza is, uh, is important, to, I think, to our country, to all of us. Uh, the Delmarva Peninsula, which includes parts of Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, uh, it's, it's hugely important. We, uh, we raise more chickens in Sussex County, Delaware. We only have three counties. Sussex County is the third largest county in America, and we raise more chickens there than any county in America. We raise more soybean there than any county in America. And a big part of our ag economy, about 80 percent of our ag economy in Delaware, is, is poultry is poultry. So it's, it's hugely Im important for, uh, for us. My hope is that we come away from this hearing more confident than ever in the strength and the importance of America's poultry industry and be better prepared to respond to any further outbreaks should they occur. Uh, I, uh, I think some of you know this, I'm going to say it again, the poultry industry is an integral part of our uh, national economy. It supports over one million jobs nationwide and about $350 billion in total economic activity every year. And some of the uh, industry is tied, as the chairman has said, to uh, egg production, which several of our colleagues know very well. Other parts of the industry, as in my home state of Delaware, uh, focus on the kind of chickens we eat. And uh, we have a Delmarvelous is actually a word on the Delmarva Peninsula. And uh, we call the chickens we eat, we call them broilers. I don't know what you call them, where you come from, but we call them broilers. Some of you know uh, the uh, uh, birthplace is, uh, of uh, the broiler industry actually comes from Sussex County, Delaware, that uh, big county. We're very proud of that. And the industry brought to uh, Delaware about $3 billion in economic activity, I think, last, uh, last year. And we export our uh, chickens um, all over the world. And the uh, Pacific Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership, which we're attempting to, uh, to negotiate and, and probably have a chance to vote up or down on later this, uh, this year, one of, the, one of the pushes there is to be able to sell chickens into Canada. We, uh, they keep us out. They impose a 200% tariff on our poultry products going into Canada. Needless to say, we don't sell a lot of chickens there. And Senator Chris Coons has worked very hard uh, to get uh, the open markets open up to Africa. Uh, and uh, hopefully we can be successful in Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership and Africa and places like that. And instead of uh, exporting 20 percent of our chickens to around the world, we'll take that to 25 or 30 or even, or even higher. Some parts of the poultry industry, particularly in the Midwest, continue to grapple with the devastating impacts of the recent outbreak of avian influenza. We've lost millions of chickens and turkeys to this disease, and the economic losses are staggering. If that's not bad enough, some of our biggest trading partners have temporarily closed their doors to our poultry exports. And in some instances, these bans affect not just one state, but every state that produces poultry products, and not just those that have had a confirmed case of avian uh, flu. Uh, thankfully, there's also some good news, and the frequency of new cases, as we know, has shown uh, significant drops in recent weeks. Broiler chickens have yet to contract the virus, and as of now, there's no evidence that uh, there's a threat to human health. We have, uh, uh, I have uh, farmers all across America to thank for much of this fortunate news. Their efforts, their sacrifices have really made a difference. I'd also like to recognize our federal and state agricultural and public health officials for all of their hard work. Our friends in academia and industry have also done a great job. Not a time to pat ourselves on the back, not a time to rest on our laurels. The possibility of new outbreaks, even here on the East Coast, is real. And all of us need to remain on high alert, high alert. This is especially true as we move into the migratory season in the coming months. Today's hearing provides an important opportunity to better understand the threats posed by avian flu. It will also help us examine the steps so many people are taking to not only put an end to this outbreak, but to ensure that new cases do not spring up somewhere else. We should also use this hearing to identify lessons learned from our response, as well as any best practices that can make a difference in stopping future outbreaks. I'm especially interested in hearing from Dr. Gelb about measures we've taken in Delaware and on the Delmarva Peninsula that could be applied nationwide to further contain the spread of this uh, virus. 
At the end of the day, we all need to work together to stop the spread of avian influence. We all have a dog in this fight. That's mixing metaphors, I think. But a dog in this fight. We must all continue to act with a sense of urgency to assure Americans, along with people all over the world, that our eggs, as well as the meat from our chicken and our turkeys, are safe to eat. This current outbreak is a very serious matter. There's no doubt about it. We have experts around the country like those before us today who have dealt with these issues before and are laser focused on stopping the spread of this disease. With continued hard work and coordination and determination, we can and will solve this problem together. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.